take a look. Occasionally it comes off there, occasionally it becomes a walking monitor, but you know, there's not really anything crazy. Excellent reading material. Oh, those moldings. See the oscilloscope from 20 years ago? Do you see the W pattern in the screen? What's going on over here? Just lab project stuff. This is an ancient HP uh, logic analyzer. It's actually a Macintosh classic. What are you using that for? Well, you can plug it into a digital circuit and it'll record the signal digitally. So like you could plug it into an 8-bit bus or a 16-bit bus and record what's happening on all the lines of the entire bus. Just go to the Wikipedia article on logic analyzers. And then we've got an Arduino and a Raspberry Pi. Just hanging out. They're mating. The workstation's everywhere. The trick with all the workstations is that mainly they're project based and you know have may or may not have transient people associated with the projects. I think my favorite thing about this room is zombie golden girls. portal gun fully functional fully functional mm -hmm. so this is you know just one of the office decorations the office is steam powered but you know I don't know <laughs> the Twitter one that's Cherneris you know from Daisy we have to have an office Cherneris map because sometimes we need to kill zombies hey is that signed Yes, that's signed, signed by the actual William Shatner. <laughs> you got him to sign this, this corner piece. Yeah. Did you take the whole thing or did he know what you... No, I handed him the corner and he's like, I don't need whatever, just I don't care. And I was like, look, don't you, aren't you curious? I've got a picture of the full thing in my phone. And he's like, move along. Yeah, that does his eyes say everything. Yeah. Typical workstation. Now, the first thing that you guys always notice are the monitor arms. We'll talk more about those in a minute. But... This is a typical setup. This is what is required to get the job done. A lot of monitors. Eh, it's only five monitors. More monitor arms. Yes. We're also big fans of steel case. All the furniture is steel case. All the chairs are steel case. Well, not all the chairs, but a lot of the chairs. We're big fans of our demotivational posters. Oh. What's that chair? It's just a chair. It's kind of like the chair from The Shining. <laughs> this hallway is kind of like a hallway from The Shining. <laughs> mm. I spend a lot of time in Suite 8. <laughs> there it is, Suite 8. We need pretty much all the square footage we can get. This is where I edit right here. Yeah, I'm editing the tech right now. There we go. There's all that. Yeah, that's one of our workbench machines that we use for testing things. Oh, look at all these arms. Yes, these are these are Space Co. monitor arms. You guys should tweet at Space Co. Business. Um, they are, in my opinion, the superior monitor mounting solution. They're mostly sold through office supply companies. They're not actually sold directly to the consumer a lot of time, but maybe we can do it a group buy if you guys are interested enough. Yeah, they're way better than any other crap out there on the market. Yeah, they're uh, based around a pneumatic cylinder instead of a screen. That one, that one there, show them how that one works. So they last forever. You have a lot of, and see this one's shorter, but that one's longer. And that's got a Visa quick release. Ooh, that's nice, that quick release. That's fancy. It is very nice. This is a two level tree. There are many other options available. You can also get a mount where two of these arms will bolt together and hold three monitors 
on a rail system that's uh, crescent shaped. Hey, what's this? Building? Yes, this is, we're just working on a workstation. This hmm. is, uh, you guys probably recognize this. This is what I hide behind most of the time. Take a look at it. Oh, the other side. Screens are all off. Well, and I'm missing screens. And I'm not really, this is not really a fully operational workstation. This is like the half-built Death Star in, uh, you know, the, one of those Star Wars movies. <laughs> Number seven, six? I don't even know. Seven and... What's on the shelf here? Let's see here. Well, we've got equal billing for, oh, it's Darth Vader and mm. my Star Trek The Next Generation Pez dispensers. Which is, I don't know why. Darth Vader's made out of Legos. That's kind of mm. neat. Well, we got uh, lots of products here, though they're going to fight it out there. Yeah, it's... 990s versus the the Intel. Yeah, it's equal billing Intel and, and uh, AMD, I guess. Uh, computer shopper, when's that from? Very long time ago. It's talking about 333 megahertz Celerons. <laughs> Good lord. Hey, some games. Uh, Quick 3 Arena for Linux. The Intel assembly language for computers. Um, computer architecture, artificial intelligence, and computer networks. Uh, Wolfram, A New Kind of Science, which is not really that good of a book. The Collected Works of Shakespeare, Walter Isaacson's book on Einstein, which I need to put downstairs, and Graham Hancock's Fingerprints of the Gods. Yeah, I just bought that Einstein book. It's, it's actually not bad. Well, he's the same guy that wrote uh, the biography on Jobs. Yes. The, the one that everyone buys. Now, I'd just like to point out that Graham Hancock is a smart man, but in the last chapter where he's talking about aliens, I think that he's really just talking about that so that his book will sell. Everything else is really interesting. It talks about how a lot of cultures have things in common like math and stuff like that even though they're spread across multiple continents and he thinks that there's probably an ancestor uh, civilization that we don't know anything about that predates Egyptians by like 5,000 years. Maybe, maybe not. But other than that it's pretty interesting. It's just interesting. That's outside of the alienness. And then my Weller soldering iron box. So here's an ancient 9 gig hard drive. Um, a 3D printed helicopter because MakerBots are kind of cool. Um, this is, this is fun. Jim, I think I've got it. All we have to do is quit feeding. Quit feeding them, they stop breathing. No, I don't. That's troubling. It makes me feel better when I'm angry. What's this? Uh, it's a tiny Lego Guggenheim that I got when I went to the Guggenheim. I just thought there was something fun about getting a Guggenheim at the Guggenheim. <laughs> just because you get to say that word so many times when you say that sentence, but no beside that. 3D effects Voodoo. Voodoo 2. Yes. Yes. This is an HP Palm Top. It runs DOS. This is x86 right here. x86 from like 1996 runs forever on two AA batteries. This is also precisely the point in time that Intel stopped caring about x86 power consumption. And now they care about it again with Haswell. We've come full circle. It's got five megabyte flash card. Five megabyte. Five megabyte. And this was state of the art. This was an expensive piece of technology when it came out. All right, got the shelves here. This is the other side of the work office. It's just decoration. We've got the, uh, the black Note 304 is actually a micro Xeon. We've got a Xeon 1230 V2 in there and a bunch of hard drives and it makes a nice little micro server for doing things that we need micro servers for. And then we've got an empty white Note 304 that we're gonna have an upcoming review of. Teddy cam. What's this? That is a Bigfoot hard drive that's been taken apart. And it's a five and quarter inch hard drive. Chrome on a CD. Chrome on a CD. It was one of those special promotional things, so I picked up a copy. I have to figure it's a collector's item. Oh, what's that? That's a fax modem. <laughs> that is the world's most serious fax modem. It is for real. Yeah, what do we have here? Well, this is this is an ongoing work in progress. This is my uh, fantasy processor collection. Now, there's a it, there's it's a one falling down a little bit, but yeah, it's it's I need to clean it up a little bit. But there's also a one gig micro drive in there, which is a mechanical hard drive the size of a compact flash card. Yeah, I used to have one of those for photography. This is slow got, as hell. This uh, case has got an 8086, a 286, a 386 SX, a 486 DX266, a Cyrix 486 equivalent, a Pentium 233. It's got a Ferranti uh, microprocessor, which is a military contractor, a Raytheon processor, which is a military contractor, a PowerPC from IBM, NEC, um, RISC-1000, uh, DEC Alpha, 
a Sun Ultra Spark and another CPU that I've forgotten about. Uh, Pong ROM? Pong ROM? I think it's Pong. But it might be something else. I forgot. I traded some guys some stuff for some things. and So it's crazy that we have a compound. And we can't show you the whole compound, as we said. Work in progress, huh? This is a work in progress. We are expanding. Well, that's an old fireplace. Yeah, it was uh, originally cast in 1886. And the building is still steam powered, which was put in in 1907. Lots of offices down here, lots of workspaces. Yes, well, we have projects that need doing. And so, yes. Darth Vader keeps an eye on my machine. Fractal Arc MIDI, 3930K, you know. Needs to be dusted. A little bit. This is the fridge. Those are hard drive magnets. These are a fine, fine array of Western Digital, Seagate, Quantum, uh, Maxter, and other drives that have given their lives in the name of service. And for the SSDs that we've had die, we've got a little sticker. This is the workstation for now. I, I may move all this upstairs, but six monitors is about right. My brain can't keep up with any more. Binary clock there? Yep. What happened to the end of that? This is just a random thing on the desk, but it's a lens that shoots 360 degrees. You point the camera up, it takes a picture of a hemispherical magnet. I mean, a hemispherical lens, and you get a 360 degree picture. Bernoulli drive? Oh yeah, zip disks. Who needs zip disks? Bernoulli all the way. You've got this technology like clash right here. 770 and a Bernoulli. <laughs> <laughs> a relatively modern video card next to an ancient, ancient 230 megabyte magnetic storage cartridge. But it was a predecessor to the zip drive. <laughs> a line printer spot. What's over here? This is the primary computer core. But fortunately, all this is just mirrors and backups. It's all this tangled mess. Oh, that's for the camera system. I was working on that earlier. <laughs> Plastic tubs are your friend. Lots of organization. There's some Star Trek door labels everywhere. It's a little off center. Guys, <laughs> it wasn't off center when the cabinet was first. It's just the cabinet's really shitty. What goes on in here? Conference. Swing around. That's a big screen. We like being able to see all the pixels. Can't even, I can't even get back far enough. It's just white, it doesn't know what to focus on. That's a big conference table. What on earth is going on with Jesus Christ? <laughs> What is that? What happened here? <laughs> One of the things that I get to do is um, best referred to as technology necromancy. And so this is an undead server. <laughs> it had a bit of a smoking problem in a former lot. This is the server lung that's been smoking. <laughs> Oh, memories. This is Studio A. Wow. We got Studio B upstairs. This is where it used to go down. We, we've been using it as a workroom. We haven't figured out what we're going to do yet. There's where I would make my coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Soundproofing. Yeah, that's how the sound is really nice. It's an actual sound stage. Who knew? It's almost like engineers carefully placed foam lovingly. I'm channeling Kirk now. There's a Liam Lee and a fractal on everything. <laughs> that was my metaphor for quitting Tiger. That's why it was appropriate, but no longer is. A sound booth. This is the sound booth for testing headphones and headphone microphones. 
the window. Two sixty, just hanging out. Well, one of them works, and the other one definitely does not. There's one over here. I think one of them, the one that used to work, is the one that JJ spilled stuff in. This one. One of them is stone dead, and the other one works until it gets warm, and then it starts doing some really weird shit. That's this one. And that one smells like coffee. Or something. He's allowed to spill it. It's, it's an Asus. This is where our pistol used to stay. It's up here. She'd stay up here, and she'd look down at me down there. That's all. Having a hard time focusing. Yeah, I'd sit down there in the dark. And she'd sit here at her desk. And stream. You guys may notice this backdrop from when she streamed. Oh no, focus. What's all this? This is the boiler. It provides clean heat and electricity to the building. This is a CNC mill. It's a cheap Chinese cast iron mill that I've been modified with some stepper motors to be a CNC mill and a Linux box to control it. A horror movie bathroom right here. Mm. It's from 1895 with modern fixtures because we're crazy. So that was just a quick overview of the parts of the office that we could show you. See ya.